These are my takeaways from R.L. Stein's uh, masterclass on writing. So the first thing that's important is that he says anyone can be a writer because we're all natural storytellers and that it should be fun and not hard. So that's contrary to some of the other writers that we've seen talk about how much work it is. He says it should be fun and it shouldn't feel like work. He says that the number one question he's asked is how you come up with your ideas. And he says that you can't really tell people how to come up with ideas, that you should just keep your eyes open. Um, and that you can imagine it like an idea store where you take your experiences and your memory and your imagination and just work off those things. So there's not a particular way to come up with an idea. He also says to be open to everything so paying attention to TV, movies, music, he talks more about it later, but you want to have those influences in your life. And then he says that he thinks of his titles first. So he came up with Little Shop of Hamsters and then wanted to write a story off of that. Um, another thing he talks about is that you only need one idea at a time. So he does not suggest having a writer's notebook and writing everything down. He thinks that that can be overwhelming um, and that you should just have one idea, take that to its completion, and then come up with another idea. So he mainly writes books, although he writes some short stories as well. So he talks about how he always writes an outline first, which for a book is usually 15 to 20 pages. And he goes through all the things that are going to happen in the book, and he spends about a week on the outline before writing the book. So he makes sure there's surprises in there and that there's no sags in interest level or character. And he says that you are the creator. You are in charge of what happens to the story. So although some writers say that their characters inform where the story goes, he wants you to know that you're in charge of where the story goes and you can determine those things. He also says that this is what makes writing fun for him because he's done all the hard work in the outline and that when he goes to actually write, that's where he can have fun and be creative because the hard part is already done. And that means that in his opinion, you should always have a plan. So those things are the hard part and then the rest of it's nice. He writes plot driven books and he wants to make sure that they're going to be fun, funny and quick moving. Um, he, because he writes for young audiences, he uses short, easy words and very short chapters. Um, and he sometimes writes outlines multiple times and usually starts with the end so he knows where he's trying to end up. So some other advice that he has is that your audience will have expectations for you over time and they'll be upset if you change things up too much. So he talked about uh, trying to end a story in a non-happy manner, and the kids were very upset about that. He also learned to use cliffhangers as a way to um, keep his brother on edge when they were children telling ghost stories. And so he suggests ending each chapter, if you're writing a book, with a cliffhanger, particularly if you're writing for children, because it will make them continue to read. He also says that when writing, you should get rid of any cell phones if you're writing a mystery and don't date your book by having any kind of specific cultural references in it. And he goes on to talk about how his audience doesn't have um, the knowledge to pick up on those references. But if you're writing for an adult, you might be able to. Um, and he also talks about how seven to 12 year olds are the most fun to write for because this is the last time in their life they'll be enthusiastic about anything, which is kind of depressing, but that's why he enjoys writing for them. He also just says to read as much as possible because you will learn by osmosis. Reading good writing and bad writing will help you with your writing. He goes on to talk about how his books are dialogue focused. Uh, they're re easier to read than paragraphs, and they help create character through their conversation. And he says not to have any talking that doesn't either help move the plot along or to introduce you to more things about the characters. Again, he says not to use slang because it will date your book. In two months, kids are talking differently than they are now. And he says same thing with technology. Don't be specific. They're listening to music, not a Walkman or something like that. Uh, be careful with your references because the kids won't understand them 
And then he suggests trying to write in the style of someone that you really love reading when you're first starting out because that will help you kind of develop your own voice. And he suggests always writing in first person because it helps the reader get into the character's point of view and causes them to have more connection to the story. He also says you're not your protagonist's best friend because you need to have some sort of conflicts happening to them and so you can't be very nice to them. He tells a funny story about getting kids names out of his son's school directory and how his kid would get paid by other kids so that he would use his their names in his books. And he also advocates having humor in your books regardless of what kind of book it is. So he writes horror but they're also funny and he suggests charting out your main characters. So writing up kind of a character description on each of them so that again when you go to actually write it's going to be easier because you already have them planned out. He says to use stereotypes to your advantage because it helps move the plot forward and he also says to keep a balance between how things feel versus the action. So don't spend lots of time describing things um, or lots of time just having it be fast moving. Have kind of a balance between those two things. He says that you scare people most by reverting to your childhood fears and describing how something feels um, not just saying how it feels. So use all of the smell, hearing, sight, develop it slowly, make it real, make it so that they're in that experience. And then he says that a monster is anything that cannot be controlled. So people have to suppress um, things that they want to say or do. And so a monster is anything that you feel like you're out of control. And he says that fear and humor are the same kind of visceral reaction. So you're going to have to play around with making sure that it's not just ridiculous to create that tension but have those moments of relief so it just doesn't feel kind of overwhelming. He reiterates that writing is fun. The first draft should be fun. Just write. Don't worry if it's perfect. Just write. Uh, he says that he thinks short stories are harder because you have less space and you have to develop one idea really, really well. A novel you can get away with a lot more in that way. He suggests writing from the beginning to the end and then going back and adding anything you need into if you added stuff as you went along. He also says don't worry about the first draft at all because that's not what's going to get published. Write the first draft, print it out, read it, look for mistakes, look for scenes that drag, look for things that are inconsistent, look for things that need more explanation, have someone else read it, don't have them read it for grammar, but ask them about the characters or the pacing or things that they didn't believe. Don't refuse to be edited. Work with editors, or in this case your teacher, uh, to help you make it better. Don't be sensitive. Be confident in your writing, but take that advice. He says that bad reviews make him laugh, that there's going to be a lot of people who really don't like your writing, and that's okay. As long as you like it and your intended audience likes it, that's all that matters. So listen to your editors, but not your reviewers. He talks about borrowing from your influences, so read everything. And he talks about how he writes off of a lot of famous writers because he's writing for children. So he can take things that are written for adults and then change them and have them work for kids. He says that he's stolen stuff from Bradbury and Agatha Christie and Stephen King. Uh, Stephen King told him that he had used all the amusement park theme ideas that ever you could write anything about. Um, and then when he was talking to Stephen King, he said, did you see that I was reviewed as a training bra for your books? And he had, so they kind of just ribbed back and forth on each other that way. And then when it comes to writer's block, he says that's the other biggest question that he's asked. And he says that he doesn't have writer's block because of the outlines. He just continues to write and knows that he can go back and fix it later. He writes every day. He's written 300 books and he plans to write 2000 words or around 10 pages a day. He doesn't get up till it's done. When it's done, he quits. No matter if he's done the chapter or not, he just is done because that's where he got to. 
He also says that he only types with one finger and that his finger has been destroyed and is all bent and stuff, but that finger has written 300 books all by itself. He usually spends about four hours a day writing and he says that it makes it easier to come back to it because he stops wherever he ends after the 2000 words so he doesn't have to start with like a brand new chapter every time he goes down to sit. Um, and he also says that oftentimes people enjoy reading series but that you can't plan to start out writing as a series writer because editors and stuff don't like to buy those things. So that's his overview of writing. Uh, it's mostly geared towards writing for children and writing short books, uh, but he thinks that the same things apply to any type of writing you would be doing.